Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Lehman. I hope everyone's having a good day. Um, I am not able to be here obviously today, kind of unexpectedly. So um, anyway, um, here's your quote for today. Look for something positive in each day, even if some days you have to look a little harder. Okay, so on the back of your homework, which was what's the rate, I'd like you to flip that over right now and just jot down something. It doesn't have to be profound or anything uh, super thought provoking, but write down one positive thing about today. Even if you've had a really terrible day, write down one positive thing. All right, I'll give you a few seconds to do that. I feel like I should hum elevator music while you're doing that. <laughs> Writing positive things down. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, thanks for doing that. I think that's um, something you guys should be doing. Anyway, stay positive. So uh, what's the rate was your homework? The paper looked like this, and you had to find the unit rate or the unit price for each of these examples. So um, if the substitute could please go around and check, don't collect, because we're going to go over the paper but check to see who does not have it done um, that would be really helpful and maybe write that down for me that would be great thank you so much all right so if you guys could get that homework out and the substitute will be around to check to make sure you have that done all right so uh, we're gonna start going over this so as we go over this I would like it if you corrected any mistakes that you have okay? I don't want you to um, keep it incorrect on your paper. Please fix it as we go over it. So have your paper out. You should have um, your pencil ready to go. And I'm going to bring up a calculator for anything that you would have potentially used a calculator for. And as long as you had, had the right answer and hopefully you're set up either on a separate sheet of paper or on the side here, that's fine. All right, so the first question said 28 miles in four hours. So kind of a standard way of doing that is how many miles per hour, right? So if you wanna end up with how many miles per hour, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your miles were on top and that, what did I put, um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I totally wrote that backwards. I'm a little concerned for myself. All right, M-I, miles and hours, H-R. So you wanna put your miles on top. So 28 miles divided by four hours is what you've been given right here. So if you take 28 divided by four, you're going to get seven. And it's very important to label these with what we call the rate unit. So what unit do we label the rate? And that is talking about miles per hour, or you may see it written MPH like that. Kind of a standard thing we see a lot. So uh, go ahead and raise your hand if you got seven miles per hour. Ooh, ooh. And if you don't understand that, again, you take your quantity miles divided by your quantity hours. All right, the next question said seven DVDs for $42. We want to find the price per DVD, All right? So we want the price per DVD, so we want to put the money on top here, so $42, and that's for every, I got to do the button, that's for every seven DVDs. So we want to scale that down to one. Well, we could do the whole proportion thing where we put one across from seven DVDs, but you can when you're dealing with unit price, for example, just take 42 and divide it by seven. So 42 divided by seven is six. So the label we would put on that is $6. And we get that right from, I'm not, um, well, I'm not gonna highlight it because the recording bar on this thing is right over the highlighter, but I'll circle it dollars and then per the other quantity in this case dvd so six dollars for every or per dvd all right 96 feet in 12 seconds so you're going to take 96 feet divide it by 12 seconds that's going to give you how many feet per second so 96 feet divided by 12 seconds Alrighty, so what you're going to want to do, I don't know if you guys, you guys learned your 12 math facts, I believe. Hopefully you did. If not, you know, you could just always do it out. But you're going to end up with 8 feet per second. So 
eight feet for every dun, 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 second. Hopefully that's not how fast you're falling. Um, but anyway, eight feet per second. That's a really, that's, that's quick, right? I'm trying to picture how fast I run. I don't know if I could run eight feet in one second. Maybe I could. I don't know. Anyway, I guess I'll have to time that sometime. That seems fast. Maybe it's slow. I don't know. More to ponder later. All right, so we have $21 for six cards. So your setup should have been the price per card, right? If you take 21 and divide it by six, which that's not going to come out to a nice uh, whole number. So I'm going to use a calculator for this one. 21 divided by six equals 3.5. So again, this is money, right? So we're going to put a dollar sign there, so 3.5. Now that's not how we write money. We need to have two spots past the decimal. So $3.50 per card is what you're going to pay. Cards are really expensive. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 24 pages read in 16 minutes. So we, we could figure out how many pages per minute or we could find out um, in one minute or I'm sorry, uh, how many minutes it takes you to read one page. Either one would kind of be okay. I'm going to go 24 divided by 16, all right? So that's going to tell us how many pages per minute. So 24 pages divided by 16 minutes. All right, 24. Oh, let me clear this, maybe. Oh, I'm writing with a, with a pen. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's try that again. All right. What was it? 24 divided by 16. So 24, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> 24 divided by 16 equals 1 and a half or 1.5. So uh, that means 1 and a half pages per every minute. All right, and right here, again, some people are like, how do you know what to divide by what? Well, just set up your ratio that you've been given, 24 pages, 16 minutes. Those are our two different quantities. We're going to take um, one quantity and divide it by the other one. If we want to figure out pages per minute, you want to put pages on top and then divide by the number of minutes. If you wanted to figure out how many minutes to read one page, you'd have to flip that around. It would be a different... Um, a different rate that you're finding and you'd have to label that. You read, for example, uh, hold on, let me look at those numbers again, 24 pages, 16 minutes. Okay, so we would take uh, 16, there you go with that marker again, 16 divided by 24, that's going to give us a fun number, point, uh, six, six, repeating forever and ever. So, um, if you did it the other way, this would be okay too. You could round to the nearest tenth or hundredth. So you'd either have 0.7 or 0.67, and you would have minutes per page. So you've got to be careful if a question asks you to specify pages per minute or minutes per page. Um, you know, your setup's going to be different depending on what your outcome is that you're looking for. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, either one of those are acceptable as long as you have that label with it. So I know either how long it, it takes, how many pages you can read in one minute, or how many minutes it takes you to read one page. The six one, number six says one dozen. You had to know that one dozen is 12 cans for $7.20, all right? So again, when we're dealing with money, most times we're going to put the money on top, $7.20 divided by 12 cans. That's going to tell us the price per can. So $7, and you guys should know that 72 is divisible by 12, right? So um, 7.2 divided by 12 is 0.6. So we have 0 0.6. Again, this is money. So we don't want to leave an answer like that. So we're going to say um, that's 6 tenths of a dollar, otherwise known as 60 cents. You want to put that second decimal, um, that second place past the decimal in there. So 60 cents per can. All right, hopefully you guys did all right on that. That shouldn't have been too difficult for you. 
Down here I expected um, some more potential issues with this one. Um, I bet a bunch of you got this right. Let's see. It says Henry rode his bike five miles in 25 minutes. So I always recommend start with what you know. You know that it's five miles for every 25 minutes, right? And what? Okay, well, the buses are here. That's what that was saying. Uh, five miles for every 25 minutes. So start with what you know. And you want to figure out what was his average speed in miles per hour. So we ran into this yesterday with some of the examples we did where the units didn't match. So we want per hour. So we've got to figure out how long, you know, for one hour. Well, you'll notice when you look at this, hours and minutes, they're not the same unit. They're both measurements of time, but we want the same measurement of time. So instead of one hour here, I'm going to change that to 60 minutes because that is equivalent to one hour, right? So 60 minutes is equivalent to one hour. And you're gonna look across here and say, that doesn't work, right? So this is when we go to the famous Mr. Mattingly quote, if you can't divide or multiply, you must simplify. So we're gonna simplify five to 25. Those are both divisible by five. So when you take five and divide it by five, you get one. And 25 divided by five is five. So um, for every one mile, it takes five minutes. So five times what gives us 60? So you're trying to figure in this blank. Five times what number equals 60, right? And you guys mostly, hopefully, know that that's 12. So we're going to plug that in times 12. Right? And now we know what we need to do up here to get our answer. So 1 times 12 is 12. So 12 miles in 1 hour or 60 minutes. So you would say 12 miles per hour. All righty. Let's look at the next part of this. It says, at that rate, how far does Henry ride in half an hour? So you could start with your original ratio here. Um, I'm going to do this one in, let's do it in red down below here. It says to show in the tank while well, I'm out of room. Um, so 5 to 25, we could start with that, miles to minutes. Or we could have used our simplified version, which was 1 to 5. Either one is going to work. So 1 mile for every 5 minutes. Again, labeling this stuff. And we want to figure out a half an hour. So you got to know how many minutes are in half an hour. So you don't want to put 0.5 because that's 0.5 hours. We want it in terms of minutes. So half of an hour is 30 minutes. All right. So that was really the trick to these, making sure that these um, units match up, right? Minutes to minutes. So 5 times what number gives us 30? Well, hopefully you had times 6, right? 1 times 6 is 6. So if you're going 12 miles per hour, it would make sense that in half of that time, you'd go half as far, right? So six miles is your answer, not miles per hour. It's looking for a distance. How far does Henry ride? So six miles, right? And again, like I said before, kind of using some common sense here. If um, we know it's five miles in 25 minutes, right? We know we'd have to go a little over double that, right? So your answer should be above 10 for the first part of this because you're going for a whole hour, or Henry is, and then if you're only going for half an hour, you know, that answer should be pretty close to five because we know, you know, 25 minutes is only five minutes off from being a half hour. So um, we're obviously going to find the technical answer, but if this were multiple choice, you'd want to explore those, those things and kind of think what makes sense. All right, so hopefully you did all right with that paper. Um, again, this is going to go in your math folder and nowhere else. So please make sure right now you put this paper in your math folder. If you did not do this and you are um, sitting there with nothing, you are either absent or you chose not to do your homework and um, you need to make sure that you get that to me, okay, when I am back hopefully Monday. So um, let's look at the next thing here. I'm going to walk you through um, probably your, mm, no, we're going to do this page. So I've got a few things. They all are based around unit um, rates. So we are going to do as much of this page as we can. 
and then whatever time we have left over, I'm gonna have you get started on your homework, okay? Which is gonna be in your module book. All right, so this chart is talking about professional sports teams and it's giving, you know, the different leagues and how many games they have per season. So in one season, oh my gosh, Mr. Mangley can speak to this probably, but the Major League Baseball um, League, wow, that's a lot of games, 162 games. That's a lot, especially compared to the Hockey League for women. They're only playing 18 or National Football League. Makes them seem kind of like pokey, right? Only, is that 16? It's hard for me to see uh, on the smart board. Let me look on the paper. Yeah, 16. Hmm. Anyway, so I guess those baseball players are rugged. All right, um, anyway, it says, how did I make that box there? I have no idea. That was weird. Random. All right, in Ice, in Ice Queens on page 14, you use unit rates to compare the per game. We didn't do that. Um, use what you learned in the table below to answer five more questions about player salary. So a salary, not salary, salary is something you eat. Salary is how much you get paid for one year. All right, so we're gonna look at how much money these people are making playing these different sports. And we're gonna round all of our answers to the nearest dollar. So we practice rounding to the nearest cent, right? So we have dollars and a decimal point and dimes and pennies, right? So um, we have, in this case, we have to round to the nearest dollar. So we're rounding to this spot right here. So when we make that decision, we're go going to look at the first spot past the decimal point, And that's gonna tell us if we're gonna round that up and say it's closer to $1 amount or if we're gonna keep it, keep it the same um, and just turn those other numbers to zero. Okay, so we're gonna look at that in a minute. So the first question here says, um, I'm sure I'm butchering these names, so I apologize, but Keika, the highest paid player in Major League Soccer, made seven, see I should know this person's name if they're making seven million dollars, seven million dollars, or seven million one hundred sixty thousand dollars in salary and bonuses in 2015. What was his pay per game? Holy cow. All right, anyway, um, let's figure that out. So we gotta first of all figure out how many games this person played, right? So we know our amount of money here. We wanna find the price per game, right? So that's going to be our setup. So money per game, we're going to do 7,160,000, write this down. And then we've gotta figure out how many games this guy in major soccer played so we've got to go back up to our chart how many games for major league soccer right here major league soccer 34 games right wow i don't know if you can hear that thunder through this microphone but it is really raining right now all right anyway let's go ahead and do that division i wish this were a little smaller all right so seven thousand or seven thousand seven million one hundred sixty thousand right so make sure you have that typed into your calculator you can use your calculator um, and we're going to divide that by 34 games divided by 34 equals holy holy cats all right I'm gonna try to move this that's not gonna stay up on that screen but anyway uh, let's see if I can remember that now we're gonna round to the nearest dollar. So you can see here that eight, right? We wanna look at the two past the decimal point and that is four below, so we're gonna let it go. So we're gonna just say 210,588. So 210,588 dollars per game. That's some mad cash, all right. Let's uh, look at number two, Alex Morgan, the highest paid player in National Women's Soccer League, earned a salary of $450,000 in 2015. What was her pay per game? See, we're doing this paper so I can figure what professional 
um, the sport I should be playing. Ha <laughs> ha. I crack myself up even when there's no audience here other than you guys virtually. All right, so we're looking at this salary, and this person is in the Women's Soccer League. Women's Soccer League right here, 24, right? So we're going to figure out our money, 4,000, or I'm sorry, 450,000 divided by 24. All right, so we're going to take those numbers, put them in our calculator, clear out your old garbage. So clear that off. All right, so 4,000. I keep saying 4,000. I've got to stop. Um, 450,000 divided by 24 equals $18,750. $18,750. All right, so that's $18,750. $50 per game. So for every game, this person is making almost $20,000. Pretty sweet gig. Which, this other guy is making $210,000. Woo! Anyway, that's mind-blowing. 25 players in Major League Baseball earned a base salary of $20 million or more. What is the pay per game? pay per game of or for a salary of twenty million dollars so twenty million dollars we gotta figure out how many zeros that is so twenty comma zero 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 comma zero 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 that's twenty million too bad all those uh, zeros in my pay paycheck are after the decimal point all right so we're going to put in um, the number of major league baseball Games, all right. So, major league baseball games. So, they play a lot of baseball. Let's see, right here, I'm circling it in black 162. So, let's go ahead and do that division. I hope you wore your glasses, kids. It helps with vision. So, that's 162 games. We're going to bust out that calculator because we love that. All right. So, get the right number of zeros in here. All right, so you should have seven zeros divided by 162, and that equals a big number. All right, 123,456 and 79 cents. So, you know, 70 cents there, that's going to, that seven past the decimal point is going to bump that up. So we're just going to say 123,457. But that was so nice. Look at that. I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But now we're going to bump that six up to a seven. All right, so uh, let's write that down. One, two, three, four, five. We rounded that up to seven dollars per game. So, so far, soccer is where the money, where the money is. All right, 4A, the highest paid cornerback, see this tells you how much I know about football, I don't even know what that is, in the National Football League is Patrick Peterson, who signed a five-year $70 million contract in 2014. What is Peterson's salary per year? All right, 70 mil. All right, so again, we've got to write 70 million down, so 70 comma 000 comma 000 divided by, and he's in the National Football League, National Football League is the second one down. So that one says 16. So we're going to divide that by 16 games. We're going to figure out how much money this person, Patrick, Patrick Peterson, how much is he cashing in for on each game? All right. So you're going to open up your calculator, type in 7000000, zero, 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 divided by 16. Oops, try to move that. I wish I could make that a little bit smaller. I don't want the history listed on there. Can I trash that? All right, so there. Okay, anyway, so you're. You're going to clear that out. 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, divided by uh, 16.
16 games, right? Up here it says 16. Divided by 16 equals 4,375,000. Wow. 4,375,000. And that's dollars, right? Because we divided dollars by games. So dollars per game. That is nuts. All right. Um, let's look at the next one. What is... Oh, I goofed up. All right, what we did is we solved part B. All right, so we're gonna, we were figuring out how much his price per game was. We're going to switch these two, so you can just draw an arrow. All right, we want to figure out what his salary is per year because that was a five-year. All right, rewind the tape. Erase what we just did. Erase it, kids. I'm telling you, this is just like I'm really there, right? Make a mistake. All right, go back, fix it. No big deal. Okay, so um, we want to figure out salary per year, right? So we know that the $70 million is for five years. All right, so we're going to divide that by five years. Okay, so let me get that going. So start over, clear that out. $70 million divided by five years equals $14 million. So $14 million for every year. Now that's not per game. All right, so $14 million per year. And up here, it, um, um, how many games is that a year? So we're looking at the National Football League again, so it's 16. So we've got to take $14 million and divide it by 16 games. That is insanity. I guess I don't really watch a lot of sports or pay any attention to them because I really don't care um, for watching this stuff. I mean, I'm glad people do, I guess, whatever, teach their own. But that's a lot of money. $14 million divided by 16 games. All right. So we're going to take that amount of money. If you don't have that typed in already, you can retype it in. $14 million divided by 16 games. So that's $875,000 for every game. $875,000 per game. Well, now. All right, so again, I think you're noticing a pattern here. We take our quantities and we divide them, right? That's gonna give us unit rate. So in these cases, we're wanting to find the pay per game. So we're taking the pay amount in dollars and dividing it by, dividing it by the number of games. In number 4A, um, you know, we had done the price per game or the pay per game so many times that I didn't really even think about it being different. It's important to read carefully, kids. But that was salary per year, and we were looking at the amount for a five-year contract. So that means um, we had to divide that by five. And then figure out, since we know how much he's making in one year, that's over the course of 16 games so that's shared equally, so $875,000 per game. And it says the maximum amount a player in the National Hockey League can make in 2000. Uh, what's it say, 15 to 16 is $14.28 million. In the National Women's Hockey League, the maximum annual salary is $25,000 per player. Wow. All right. What is the difference in the maximum pay per game between the men and women's league? So we have a few steps here. All right, so let's read that again. All right, the National Hockey League underline that. I'll do it in green. National Hockey League, 14.28 mil. All right. Um, in the National Women's Hockey League, the maximum is $25,000. That doesn't seem fair. Wow. Hmm. That seems super lame. 
Uh, what is the difference in the maximum pay per game between the men and women's leagues? Well, this will be eye-opening, won't it, kids? All right, so uh, we got to figure out how many games that is, right? So $14.28 million. So if we write that out, 14, we don't want to put 0.28. We want to write that out as um, $280,000 like that. And that's over the National Hockey League is 82 games. Well, well, we'll see. It seems like a big difference. Maybe it's not because look how many games the guys are playing and the girls are only playing 18. So we'll see. The math will tell the truth here. All right, so um, we're going to take that amount of money and we're going to divide. All right, so again, in your calculators, clear the memory junk here. Let's see. I don't see the numbers. All right, so 14.28 million is what that is. And we are dividing that amongst 82 games. That is circled up there. Divided by 82. That is 174,146. We're rounding to the nearest dollar. So 34 cents is not going to round you up to um seven dollars there it's we're gonna keep it at six dollars at the end so one seven four one four six one seven four one four six per game for the men so let's label this um national hockey league the nhl and then for the women that's the um, and W National Women's Hockey League, and that's uh, let's see, twenty-five thousand dollars per year. All right, so we are going to do the same thing again. We're going to take twenty-five thousand dollars, and we're going to divide that. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Well, we know it's going to be a lot less, right? Because if you take 14 million divided by 82, you're still getting $174,000. Divide at $25,000 divided by 82, or not 82, erase that, by 18. We're talking about this one right here. I'm circling it in black up top. All right, National Women's Hockey League is 18 games. All right, so we're going to take 25,000. We're going to divide it by 18 games. I still don't think that's bad, but geez, that's a lot less. All right, so we're rounding it to the nearest dollar. So 1,388.8 repeating. So we're going to look, is uh, 88 cents enough to bump that up to $9? So it'd be $1,389. So 1389. One, three, eight, whoops, eight, nine dollars per game. That is insane. All right. So I, I keep checking. Did we do that right? The maximum annual salary is $25,000, but they got to play 18 games, so we divide it by 18. And then 14.28 million for the guys divided by 82 games. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you have it, kids. Anyway, all right, I've got to wrap this video up because the end of class is coming soon. What I would like you to do is in your planners, make sure you write down this page. Let me double check that it's the same up here as it is in yours. It's page 55. You are finding um, the better price on cereal, all right? So you've got to find the unit price of these two different size boxes of cereal. And then find the difference. What is the difference between those two unit prices? So you're just going to subtract. Same thing with the next one. And again, you're rounding to the nearest cent, all right? Round to the nearest cent. You're buying soda. You've got two options. Which one should you be buying if you've got to buy a lot of soda, right? Should you go to the 20-pack or the 12-pack? You're going to find the unit price and figure out which one is the better deal. 
the better buy and then find the difference in the prices. Um, and then same thing for batteries. Find the price, you know, price of each pack and figure out which one is the better deal and then um, find the difference in the price. So anyway, nice job today. Hopefully um, I'm really grateful for your um, patience with me being out and I appreciate that you're being uh, helpful and um, observant and everything for the substitute. I really appreciate that, guys. I'm hoping I'll see you on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend, and if you go to um, the activities tonight, I hope you have a good time. So anyway, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.